It's July 2019, and after a couple years of very devastating fires uh, Hi, in California. Hi, I'm Bonnie Morse. I'm a beekeeper and a certified arborist. Today we're going to be discussing how to make your landscape both more resistant to wildfires while also protecting our pollinators. Increasing fire dangers are not the only crisis we are facing with the changing climate. We are facing unprecedented threats to biodiversity. In the long run, loss of pollinators could create a shift in vegetation with plant reproduction favored by wind pollination. Wind pollinated species include grasses and pine trees, which tend to be more fire prone. Long before European honeybees were introduced in the colonies in 1622, 4,000 species of native bees, in addition to butterflies and other insects, pollinated flowers in what is now the U.S. The majority of these bees, 90 of which call the San Francisco Bay Area home, are solitary and ground nesting. Commercial farming practices, which provide much of the food consumed by the population, have had detrimental impacts to pollinators over the past 80 years. In the urban environment, loss of habitat, pesticide use, and prioritizing plant aesthetics over function has also impacted populations. But urban areas are also in a position to transform quicker than areas dominated by commercial agricultural production and could potentially hold the key to protecting biodiversity. Landscapes that are more fire resistant don't have to be biological dead zones. We can have both fire resistant and ecologically beneficial yards. We're being asked to remove plants that tend to have a higher fire risk. Well-maintained and irrigated plants are almost always safer than ones that are drought-stressed or poorly maintained. That said, some species are more difficult to properly maintain due to characteristics like high leaf litter and dead woody interiors as they age. Many of these plants do not support biodiversity and are non-natives, so removing them and replacing with better selections can be a win-win. Transforming your garden into a fire-smart and biodiverse landscape may seem like a daunting task. So make a plan to tackle it in steps to maximize your maintenance dollars and minimize your time investment. Start with undesirable plant in the zone zero. Within five feet of structures, the ones that FireSafe Marin recommends be removed due to their tendency to build up dried material. An example are these black acacia trees overhanging this garage. This invasive species has a lot of dried material in the canopy and on the ground during fire season. The benefits of shading the garage from afternoon sun and some bird nesting activity did not justify the fire hazard and limited biodiversity they helped to support. There were much better options for this location. The trees were removed and replaced with Ceanothus, a native tree, and smaller natives including Salvias and Douglas Iris. Ceanothus is an early blooming plant that evolved with native bees and supports them with nectar and pollen after their post-winter emergence. In addition, it's relatively slow growing and can be easily kept pruned at an appropriate distance from the garage. There's still work to do around this planting bed. The vine needs to be cut back, and ideally the fence would be replaced with a non-combustible material. But take it one step at a time and prioritize the biggest hazards to your home. From a bee perspective, density of plant type is important. Bees prefer to forage on a single plant type on any single foraging trip. Larger patches, at least three feet by three feet when the plants are mature, will attract the most bees. If you like the look of dense plantings and the beneficial insects they support, you can take advantage of annuals that emerge in the spring when it's cool and wet. They will reseed and die back prior to fire season. In fact, other than ensuring dried planting material is removed by fire season, you may have to do nothing else, including watering. You can collect seeds from annual plants that you and the pollinators enjoy. You'll save money. Just collect the seeds when dry and store in a paper bag. You can distribute in desired locations in the fall or trade seeds with friends. That's it. Removing plants with little ecological benefit but that create a fire risk can create opportunity. Oleanders, not native to North America, provide little ecological benefit to native species. In addition, the hedge laddered between the front privet hedge and the home. In this case, a loquat tree was transplanted from a bed next to the house and was placed where an oleander hedge was removed. The loquat tree provides pollen and nectar for pollinators in late fall and fruit in the spring. Try to select a variety of plants that provide pollen and nectar during different times of the year. 
to maximize the benefits to pollinators, it's often best to plant the straight species as opposed to cultivars. Many cultivars have been selected and bred for aesthetics, but would be unable to reproduce without human assistance because their pollen and nectar is unavailable to pollinators. If you need help, just observe which plants you see the bees visiting. They'll let you know what they prefer. A final comment. One of the easiest ways you can protect pollinators is to eliminate chemical use in the garden. A pesticide is a pesticide, and you may be harming beneficial insects as well as polluting our waterways. For advice on less toxic alternatives, reach out to Our Water, Our World. Fire safety can be both beautiful and support biodiversity. We can have it all with careful planning.